So good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Tuesday night webinar. It is Tuesday, um, I didn't even look at the date, uh, July 16th, 2024. Uh, we are uh, closing in on the halfway point of, well, we're past the halfway point of the year, and many people are probably uh, feverishly trying to either sequence their show or build stuff for their show or order stuff for their show or get stuff together. And uh, it's a pretty exciting part of the year because, you know, we're all coming out of our uh, summers kind of long, uh, but I got to get to work on my Christmas stuff. So, or Halloween even. Halloween's coming. That I mean, Halloween's going to be, you know, only four months away. So um, what I wanted to do was uh, I wanted to go through the uh, an effect that we really haven't looked at um, for quite a while. It's the kaleidoscope effect. Kaleidoscope effect is uh, an effect that I would call a overlay effect or an effect that affects the items that are underneath it. So uh, by design, the kaleidoscope does nothing at all, period, with uh, by itself. Whenever you put the effect natively down, the default setting is, as, as you see here, you see a triangle, you see X, Y, you see a size, and you see a rotation. There's really not or seemingly not a whole lot of things that you could really do with kaleidoscope. So I, I'm going to walk through all of the basics uh, of just the basic effects so that you can see them. And I'm going to use the pinwheel effect underneath uh, the default wall. It might not be default. We'll, we'll open that up here real quick. Um, normal. We'll change this to canvas. And I think I need to get a preview here shouldn't be anything uh, blocking. So you should be able to see the preview there. The, the pinwheel effect is, this is our base effect. Uh, I, I think I kept it pretty consistent the whole way along with these. Uh, just so you can get an idea of what these effects do. Now, um, as I said earlier, uh, Canvas, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the uh, kaleidoscope, is uh, is an overlay effect. It overlays something. It affects things below it. And in order for it to do that, x -Lights has to utilize the canvas mode in the layer blending box, which I've precariously hid behind the preview so that you can uh, see it. So the moment that you activate it, and whenever you look at the kaleidoscope effect with just pinwheel. Now you saw the pinwheel was pretty much the default. I added a couple more arms to it. I mean, it's really nothing extravagant. Uh, you have a little bit of a twist there to it. Um, so if we go into it, Kaleidoscope really doesn't look like a lot more than a bunch of blobs. Um, but the, the, what you get from Kaleidoscope is a little bit different because of the, the four main settings that you have to play with. Or, well, there's, yeah, the basic, the four. And those are the types. So there's two types of kaleidoscope. You can have a triangle and you can have a square. This is what the square would look like as a default. This is what the triangle would look like as a default. Um, the, the, the next thing that you find with uh, the kaleidoscope would be your XY center. Uh, so you have an XY coordinate location. And it, it doesn't exactly um, equate to what you might think XY looks like uh, perfectly. And so what I'll do is I'm going to, uh, you'll see this whenever we whenever we start moving the X. So uh, if we move the X, we just moved it all the way, we're pretty, we're pretty, um, pretty aggressive with being able to change it one, one direction or another. But if you make, especially, especially if you're on, uh, let's go back to the triangle. Uh, it's it's you can be pretty aggressive whenever you change some of these things and you won't see any apparent change whatsoever. What X Lights is doing whenever it uses the kaleidoscope effect is it's zeroing in on a position or a, a, a specific area in the um, in the sample area. So X Lights right now being in triangle mode as a default. It's drawn a triangle, and let me see if I can go and do this in uh, annotate, poorly in annotate. What x -Lights will do is it'll draw a triangle right here, and it'll make it at this point 
one size. It'll make it either small or big. Now, we haven't got to the size slider yet, but you can see right here the size is rather small. So it's probably like wee little bitty tiny triangle right in the center there. Um, so if I, uh, let me get rid of that and I'll close this out because I don't want to draw on the screen a lot. Um, but what tends to happen is is that whenever you're using the, um, the, the, the two different types, it's easy to uh, think that it's not doing very much of anything when you actually have to do things with the XY coordination. Uh, whenever you're in square mode, your square is little itty bitty. And you can see the little tiny squares, hopefully, uh, in the center there. You can see the little squares, and that's only because of your size. So uh, keep in mind that whenever you start messing around with specifically triangle, one of the things that you might want to try is move the triangle down. And oh, if you do, it might not do very much. But if you move it down ever so slightly, it might come up with something a little bit different. Uh, if you're going to move your XY over some, then keep in mind that it might not portray something very interesting. That is until you get to the size. Um, it, it's kind of hard to demonstrate the actual triangle that it's trying to pick up. We'll try to do that a little bit later with some of the other effects, but just with the pinwheel, because I think the pinwheel is the most telling of many of the effects, that you kind of get a good example of specifically here, whenever you back out the size, you make it as large of a triangle or as large of a sample size as possible. And, and, and as you can see here, it's, it's pretty large. It's a pretty large sample size. And so what, all we did here was we moved the, the center Y out. And as you move the center, uh, the center Y down, meaning uh, straight down, we're moving the Y down to the lowest position it can go. You can also move it up to the highest position that it goes. And then what happens is the sample is up here, but it's not recording anything down here. It's not extrapolating it down. Uh, and it looks like you can see the pinwheel actually going down below it. So there's always that, that sample area that you're working from, or sample size, if you will. You can see that as you zoom in or you zoom out, it's the sample that it's picking up and where you're honing in on it exactly is giving you that very specific um, projection and multiplication outwards as a kaleidoscope therefore would do. So um, kaleidoscope's a lot of fun to play with. You, you, and again, the, the only other thing that, you, that we haven't talked about is the rotation. And so basically with the rotation, and we're using a square kaleidoscope type here, um, if you use rotation, basically rotation is rotating the exterior around the sample size. And this, whenever I go through rotation, you're going to start to see where it's sampling from. And so if we go ahead and we just change it just a little bit, and maybe, maybe right here, and I'm going to, uh, let me change the color of this to green and red, or green and, green and white or maybe blue and white. We'll do blue and white. Uh, that might be, might be a little too hard to see the light blue. Light blue and white, there we go. Um, what you can see here in the center, and this is where I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do a little bit of annotating with, um, with zoom, is it's sampling roughly inside this square. And you can see what, I, what it will do is it will amplify or extend out the mirrored image, and it will. In, in this in this instance, we're using square. Uh, it it sends out that image and it amplifies it in multiple directions. So one of the things that uh, is important to mention is whenever you do play with the kaleidoscope, you're going to get something that we call artifacting. Now artifacting is little bits and pieces of effects that are somehow being mirrored or picked up at the very edges where the edges of those mirrors are coming together. So you might see, uh, for example, here, let me, uh, let me delete that drawing and I'll get rid of this. Um, you might see little bits and pieces right in around the center here. 
that, that's just that's just what happens whenever you use kaleidoscopes. Sometimes when you're using the effect, it's going to give you these artifacts. So don't uh, you might have to you might have to thicken your lines if you're trying to avoid stuff like that. Um, and what I mean by uh, thicken your lines is um, what I, what I mean by that is come into your actual effect and make it just a little bit thicker. And when you do, it kind of gets rid of some of that. And, it, and then again, it may, in fact, create even more. You might see a little bit more distortion to it. So just keep in mind that Kaleidoscope is a great way to take any effect and overlay it over top of uh, those effects and get a completely different result. Um, you can make these as... Uh, as, as simplistic or as complicated as you'd like them. And, um, and towards the end, what I'd like to do to have just a little bit of fun would be to take you guys along and give me some suggestions and something you'd like to see what it looks like whenever it comes to, um, when it comes to doing a kaleidoscope. So again, if you have any questions, go ahead, throw them in chat. I have chat open. Um, we'll go ahead here. One of the things, uh, that I, I think that we, sometimes have an issue with when, when we're sequencing or when we're just working working with effects is that we don't realize that there's actually some challenges with some of the effects uh, other than the fact that I, uh, I explained about the the artifacting that happens with the kaleidoscope um, if we zoom out and I, I bring in pretty much all of the other effects I think the or the other uh, the other um, uh, matrix panels and the the mega trees uh, I think one of the things that many of us uh, discount is uh, the ability to copy and paste effects between one prop and another prop. Um, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not a huge copy and paster. I don't, I, I like to do things rather uh, uniquely uh, a lot, and uh, that's why I have a ton of preset effects because I can't stand copying and pasting all the time. So I have to generate new effects, and the kaleidoscope effect is one of those effects that helps me do that because I can look at things and make changes to them. However, one, what Kaleidoscope is not, is not good at copy and paste. Um, and that's because Kaleidoscope doesn't scale. There's no scaling with Kaleidoscope whatsoever. And I'm not sure exactly that it could be, that it's a, uh, that it's a, um, a bug or that it can be fixed or that it's even broken. Uh, it's just the way that uh, the effect sees the exact settings of that matrix or that mega tree, and in the instance of the P10 panel in the center of the screen, anytime you have a giant uh, high density prop, you're always going to get more more quality, good looking, good flowing effects. But then, if you have a mega tree, it's not as high definition. Uh, so, you know, you, you you kind of have to look at what the template is that you're working with and be able to possibly make some changes and adjustments to it. So for example, you see here, these are just the exact same effects in, in all, all three of these cases here, I'll, I'll go through them all, that where I've copy and pasted them, uh, this is the exact effect. So what you see on the matrix, I started there and then I just grabbed it and I threw it onto the mega tree. And if we were trying to get kind of smaller, what, what we would have to do is instead of that, um, instead of this kaleidoscope size slider being number 26, as it is in the matrix here, it says 26, we might have to bump that down. If you're trying to get, uh, or down meaning up a, a lower number, because you're trying to duplicate or replicate what's going on there, you may have to go in and make some changes. Um, this, this is also true whenever it comes to other effects, such as, here's the bars effect. Um, if, I, if I go to the bars effect here, let me just take, turn canvas off for a second so you can see what the bars looks like. Um, I've got bars set here, nothing fancy, there's nothing crazy here, but all I've set on bars is I've set three, and I've used red, green, and blue, and I have it three patterns repeating, and I have it cycling itself up to five times. So if we go back here and we go back into, um, excuse me, did I, how did that, that was weird, matrix. If we, yeah, well, basically if we go back in and we go ahead and activate canvas mode, uh, you can see that you get a certain look. And that's a really interesting look. There's, 
uh, all, to, to build this effect, if you wanted to build this yourself, I left, uh, I, I, I switched this to square and uh, I left the center XY alone. I didn't change that at all. And then I made the size different. I went to size 26 and then I did a rotation. And that's where the rotation really comes in handy. Um, but you'll notice that, uh, I, and I can't remember what that original size was, was uh, 36. Um, but whenever you look out and you copy and paste the exact same effects, you, you have a different result or uh, a different uh, output compared to what you worked so hard to come up with in the first place. And so if we start here at the matrix at the garage and we start looking at not the, not the, um, the bars effect, but looking at the kaleidoscope, and if we can possibly maybe make that a little bit smaller, and I'm just using my mouse here with the scroll wheel, and I'm zooming up, which makes it smaller. And there, it looks like it's kind of almost about the same. But what you might also realize is since the matrix is a little bit smaller, maybe instead of having three iterations, maybe you need to go in and you need to change this to two. And whenever you do, you might see that, oh, look, there it goes. It, they look about the same. But the difference now is, is the speed's a little bit uh, faster. So maybe we need to go four iterations or four speeds, or maybe it's 4.5. I don't know if you can do a half. Uh, uh, I don't know if you can do a half in bars. I'm pretty sure you can. But now you get you get the idea that you can you can customize each one if you really want it to look as similar as possible. You certainly can do that. That's the downside of the kaleidoscope. Uh, that I, I mean, and the same thing goes with the with the uh, mega trees and so forth. Whenever you're trying to really get that same look, um, it just becomes a little bit more challenging. So um, the last one here that I'll show you that's kind of it, with all three of them, so that you can see how they all appear different. Uh, if we look at the main matrix here, you can see, hey, that looks pretty neat. Couple, you know, like a starfish kind of, uh, you know, blow up type thing. Uh, going on there, but then every then you go over and you look at uh, the garage matrix. And the garage matrix actually looks pretty cool, but now you go over here to the mega tree and you can see the entire butterfly effect underneath. But what you can't see is you can only see one kind of triangle. So maybe you need to go and maybe you need maybe you like that. Maybe you want to try to repeat that. I don't know if you can repeat that exactly over onto a uh, onto a, a matrix. So your, your, your results, your mileage varies whenever you're using the kaleidoscope effect if you're copying and pasting. So just be very, very uh, clear about that whenever you start messing around with it. Um, so one of the things that I want to bring up, and I'm going to do a throwback here uh, to last uh, about a month ago. I want to say it was a month ago. We did a uh, we did a webinar, and that webinar was on Intro to RGB. It was our uh, Tune 2 series. Uh, oh, excuse me. No, yeah. Is that what it was? No, I'm sorry. Wrong one. Ha! I thought I had that queued up. Well, son of a gun. Um, give me just a second. Do, do, do. Well, I will, I will, I, it looks like I, I, it didn't, for whatever reason, it didn't open up on there. We have a, um, we have a webinar that we did um, a few weeks ago on uh, layer blending in x -Lights. And um, what I would say is, is that if you want to get a better um, understanding on layering and some of the things that you're going to see in the next sections or two, uh, layering your effects and learning how to layer your effects is very important. But this is where when you do learn how to layer blend uh, or whenever, as you're playing with layer blending, uh, one of the things that you'll pull out of it is the ability to get good looking effects and then being able to use the, can uh, the canvas mode with the kaleidoscope and be able to change them up so that you really can't tell what they are. Now, I'm not going to get too super, uh, too super uh, in depth with a lot of the things, but I wanted to share with you some of the basic, some, some of the effects that I've, I've done over the years that are preset effects. So this is a preset effect that I made for 
one one or uh, one one sequence or another and I thought oh well and it's it, it's kind of hacked up a little bit it's a little bit smaller than what it normally is it has a couple more layers but I wanted to show that if you do have an effect or a preset effect that you can always take that preset effect place it down below and start playing with things um, if you wanted to you could change this to triangle and this is this is basically what I'd like to do uh, with a lot of the things that I've done. Um, I find that I like to move the Y down whenever I'm doing the triangle. And then whenever I do, I usually have to make the size bigger so it can find whatever it is that's sampling up in the center uh, so that the triangle actually has something to outlay or portray. But just, just know that there is, as long as you have a graphical effect underneath, you're going to get some sort of resolution. Um, so here is here's the lines effect uh, I took two with green and I took two with some blues maybe we can make this a little darker blue um, and and then you could again I and I'm not gonna get too in uh, in depth with this but uh, if we were to go and do some actual layer blending where we do like let's do highlight vibrant or highlight um, let's see if highlight does it highlight does some things there we could do one is mask uh, two is unmask there we go there we go, a couple of those. Well, two reveals one. So there's a little bit of layer blending there that's going on, some different things in the, in, in the reveals and stuff. But you could have a little bit of fun with playing with those layer blendings and then come in and begin to, um, begin to utilize the canvas mode as far as the kaleidoscope goes. Uh, one thing I will say is if, if things appear to come through, like the, the one of the lines effect doesn't appear to be like hidden underneath you could come up here and use effect one and it'll only show you what's happening when effect one is being uh, optioned out uh, so if there's some background things that you might want to try to get rid of it and it's on a different layer it's from coming from a different layer uh, you can do that you can go to effect one and it will it, it, the kaleidoscope works just fine it hides anything goofy in the background I can give you another example of this a little bit later on um, so here's here's a suggestion uh, just a this is a, a standard uh, spiral effect where you have uh, we have some reds and greens and um, all we did was we took this literally and gave these opposite spiral wraps we gave it a negative four and uh, a negative a negative 0.5 uh, well we gave it the same speed but we just did a negative four on the lean and uh, repeated the palette so it's basically the same effect and it's going in one direction and this is what happens this is what you get whenever you uh, start to um, kind of blend the layers together and again you're you're not you're not locked into anything specific you can go up and down and get some really really interesting things now I, again a lot of this was just I wanted to use basic layer of effects and then begin changing them so that you could see hey the more that you change the the kaleidoscope what happens underneath of it um, because you don't know what you're going to get until you actually go through the movements. Now, if we go and change the rotation on this, now you're going to see something quite different than you saw before. And this looks interesting, uh, but in, personally, I think this is going a little bit too slow. And in my head, I can see this going much faster. So if we could do a, uh, we could do 1.5 on there. That would kind of double the speed on it. And you could see how different it looks just because you've gone and changed the movement speed on the effects. So the, the hard part that I've learned with uh, the kaleidoscope is I want the effects to do something different, but then I have to go to the effect to make the change. And I always want to just go, well, why doesn't it do that whenever I change the kaleidoscope? Because the kaleidoscope is only overlaying the change of the effect thanks to the, I don't want to call it a mask, but the, the uh, canvas mode being applied. Um, the last thing I'll say uh, about suggestions with uh, with the kaleidoscope is it is in your best interest to have negative space and using negative space is really really important the the biggest reason is that you can actually see the movement you can actually see where uh, the effect is starting from or and moving off to and so here I'll go ahead and uncheck the canvas mode 
uh, and you can see that there is a plasma and and I've got the uh, color choice set as normal and you can see that we have um, uh, we have a black uh, red a blue and a black that is set and that gets you your kind of your resolution if you if that's what you would want to call it is uh, uh, maybe you want to beef up the red uh, the blue maybe you want to um, maybe you want to give it an extra red there's there's just a lot of ways to to, to change the the uh, plasma effect and to have fun with it but also having that negative space uh, gives you something more to look at it, it, it just it has it it has uh, that movement to it so always include uh, a little bit of negative space in in what you do and you'll be able to see the kaleidoscope as it is uh, very as it can be interesting very interesting so uh, if we went back to square here and uh, we, we and again you get you get to play with this um, the smaller the square is the smaller the sample size is so this is what's what's a lot of fun so you get a lot of great cool stuff whenever you zoom out and you use that rotation uh, another thing that I haven't mentioned yet is the ability to uh, utilize some basic value curves just going in and uh, clicking and dragging on them or coming down here and using some of the built-in ones this ramp up down uh, which is basically it's telling it rotate one way and rotate the other um, you know you have the option of go from low to high so go from we can go from uh, small size to large size as it's rotating in and out and you can actually and this is this is where I said I wanted to I, I did want to show you this you can see kind of the size of the sample that is being taken whenever you see the size of the square that's coming out from the center right here in this image you can see the break of where uh, x lights is poor, uh, refracting the effects out so that you can see them and with the turning it's really interesting so um, the, remember that you have the value curves that you always you're always able to utilize uh, value curves don't have to be drastic the drastic does show things so it's helpful to just show things whenever you whenever you use the the you know the crazy the crazy up and down and up and down but whenever you're sequencing it's generally it's not necessary to make big massive changes with value curves so you you always have something here to play with whenever it comes to here's your X and Y center so you can have a lot of fun whenever you're playing with the kaleidoscope effect and but that but that's not all I mean there's so much more that you can do with the kaleidoscope um, one of the things that uh, I, I this is a preset effect that was probably it was either shared with me or it was one created probably around 2018 2019 something like that and it it's it served itself rather well over the past few years because because the 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 effect um, is it's a basic effect um, it, it's it's a shock wave if, if you just look at your layers here you have a you have a uh, two pin wheels one flipped horizontally or going the exact opposite direction is the other one uh, you have a shock wave in the middle that's just slowly shock waving out and then you have the circles effect going down here underneath of it all uh, a lot of fun that you can have playing with this but what can it do what what does it do whenever you click on it and that canvas mode gets activated and so I, I happen to um, appreciate or tend to lean more towards using the square just because you it, for whatever reason sometimes it's really really nice um, but there are instances where the triangle gets you some really interesting things too this one though in my opinion may not look quite as good so I would probably zoom in a little bit more and I want I tend to lean more towards going to the bottom and getting something like that getting the starfish look or, or something like that but again you're not gonna know what to change or how to change something until you make that change so just keep that in mind so here's here's a good example you could have it going back and forth this way and uh, that triangle there it's just sampling all all over the place so um, here keep in mind that you can always layer over top of the kaleidoscope the kaleidoscope can be part of whatever uh, the effect is the whole effect in general is and uh, so keep in mind here you have you have your pinwheel effect down here um, 
where I moved the Y center uh, on the tr uh, on the uh, kaleidoscope effect. I moved the Y all the way to zero. I moved the size to 100. So I get my little uh, starfish design type thing. I can add more if I add more arms. Maybe I make this eight. And um, you know I can play with the thickness on it. So there's there's a little bit more thickness. Uh, I can do this 3D inverted uh, fade. So you get get a little bit more drama whenever it comes to changing things and and that's part of what you what you're doing whenever you're you're using uh, the kaleidoscope and your your layer blending you you're using multiple things all mixed together at the same time um, as this is this is another example of the exact same effect uh, a little bit more calm um, keep in mind too that you get to because you do get to play with this there's a lot that you certainly can play with um, I, what I like to do is I like to mess around with the warp effect and here if we go ahead and bring down the warp effect that's a that's a really interesting simple base level of effect that pretty much anybody could come up with uh, whenever whenever you take into consideration you're 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 just taking a um, single strand effect rotating at 90 degrees copying and pasting it on itself and all you're doing is adding two chases uh, giving it a bounce and I'm doing dual chase on both of them so if you delete one it looks just like that and then you copy it and you paste it you get you, you get a basic uh, a basic um, uh, layering that you can put over top of it uh, now again uh, if we come back here and and I, I don't I, I don't want to do too much of this but um, if we go over here and we do one is mask on both of these uh, one is mask on both of those. You really can't see anything on there. Uh, I thought, what the heck? Why not? Why, let's try it. But what happens if uh, two, one is unmask? And and so now you have some really interesting things that you can come up with uh, in as far as layer blending goes. Whenever you're doing different levels or different layers, um, this here is uh, an older effect, something that I did. Uh, a while back it's uh, three different layers here uh, I took three lines on and you can see it here uh, a lower mid and an upper part maybe not equal parts but uh, nonetheless they they, they are uh, three different parts of the buffer uh, and I just sliced them up and I had them doing their own little thing here and uh, basically here did I I'll, I'll undo that again so if I change the color of this one here in the middle, let's let's make it blue uh, or white. Let's do white and blue and get rid of the red so you can see it. So there you can see the blue one in the middle. And it looks like I had the brightness turned down on this. this pre no, no, I certainly didn't. Um, in any event, uh, I've got, I've got a, an effect here on the left, an effect here in the middle, and an effect on the right. Uh, and all I did was I took some basic... Uh, um, uh, meteors and I have them going straight up nothing fancy there I have icicles set on them uh, there's a speed it's going speed up and down up and down um, we could add some warm-up frames where it warms them up so there's more of them on the screen whenever it starts but whenever you actually activate the uh, the kaleidoscope you, you have something really different or interesting that that possibly is going to be really neat and generally what I've what I've come to find out is that I really appreciate or really like the kaleidoscope effects that are mid to small so at the at the center point or down and that's on the matrix panels that's that's the ones I tend to like the most but as you can see it's this is this was a preset I, I created probably many years ago um, that you can you, you get the chance to play with uh, and you're not going to know what it can do, um, especially whenever you take the time to break up your layer settings or your, your uh, buffer tab, breaking that up a little bit, making it a little bit different. So the sample that it gets to see isn't the same sample all the time, right? Um, this, this other example here, this is, a, this is a, um, a shader, and I have two shaders underneath of it and uh nothing fancy uh this is it's i want to call i think this is called the m4 i think this is in uh available yeah it's m4 i think it, i think it's in the downloads you can go download it and uh, it's a lot of fun to play with i i made one of them go one way and i made one of them go uh in reverse so i have this one going speed wise forward 
by at one and I have one going backwards at one. And I, it, again, I'm using kaleidoscope. I'm using uh, the size. Uh, I lean more towards the, the smaller sample size, so the mid. I actually went a little bit larger here with this one, so it, it kind of centered it. Uh, this is this is one of those kind of effects here that if you were to try and copy and paste to let's say something smaller like the ribbon tree, um, and I'll go pull that up right here, that it really doesn't do too much there. So you have to back it down whenever it comes to size to get it to do something just a little bit more. The, the other thing too is, is negative space. There's, there's much more negative space that's available in, this, uh, in, the, in the larger matrix. So uh, the less opportunity for black that you have, uh, the less that you can blend that in whenever Kaleidoscope gets to do its thing. Uh, another thing too to consider is maybe, just maybe, the tree will look better with, a, um, with the triangle size. And moving, moving the, uh, moving the 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 um, zero point for the uh, for the sampling of effects whenever you're in the kaleidoscope. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video right here. It's been wonderful being with you guys all. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you like the video out there on YouTube, because this is getting uploaded, we didn't do this live. Uh, well, we did it live, but we didn't do it live stream. So uh, you're always welcome to join us here. Uh, every Tuesday night here in the PPD Zoom Room. If you like the video, give us a huge thumbs up if you haven't done yet. So hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications so you never miss one of our PPD webinars, our videos, our uploads, they're always happening. And uh, it's wonderful to have you guys here along with us. Um, uh, I guess we'll uh, let you go here. Have a great week and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye for now.